So there's this metaphor that's been coming up a lot for me lately, um, and I wanted to share it. Uh, it's been coming up because I'm using it often to describe, like, bring connection back and what are the games like, what are they about, what is this for. Um, and I also love metaphors, so this is right up my alley. If you don't already know, I have a whole podcast that's called Life is a Metaphor. So I love... Um, toying with metaphors and just like fleshing them out all the way. So I guess this will be kind of like a podcast episode, but with video, um, because I'm going to take this metaphor and just like flesh it out a little bit. Um, and the subject for today or the metaphor for today is, um, we have this concept of stretching and strengthening our physical body, you know, and we kind of know that that is good for us and we see the gain in that and we feel the feel goods about it you know like stretching and strengthening feels good it helps you to feel more capable more alive more connected with your body um and that there's just like so many gains there but sometimes we don't see how the very same thing applies to stretching and strengthening the inner self or the inner body the inner you um, and that's what bring connection back games are supposed to be for. They're supposed to be for stretching and strengthening, um, stretching, like doing some stuff that's outside of your comfort zone or trying new things, experimenting, strengthening, like, um, asking questions and like finding and discovering new parts of yourself, like building, um, new layers of you, you know, just like you would build muscle when you're strengthening or, you know, getting, um, more comfortable with yourself. Um, you know, all of those things are having to do with strengthening and stretching, um, in that same way. And, you know, we can see how, um, stretching and strengthening in our physical bodies can be like playful and also can be um, like more introspective too. I mean, you can stretch and strengthen in this like explosive playful way and also in this introspective way. And the same thing applies to the internal world too. You know, it can be playful and active and explosive, but it can also be sort of quiet and introspective and like pleasurable in that way too. Um, and so like all these metaphors apply. I mean, they all apply. It's like if I could take any little detail about stretching and strengthening in your physical body and I like with almost sure certainty, it would apply to the inner stretching and strengthening of yourself too. Um, but you know, people, it just doesn't seem as obvious. I mean, I think maybe on a very superficial level, but all the details of like, no, it can feel good. You know, it's not gonna just be hard stuff people have that same hang up about the body stretching and strengthening too. Like, Oh God, is it going to just be like so intense and cumbersome and awful and painful and whatever. And they think that about the inner stretching and strengthening too. But you know, we've like made our way around that, um, to some degree and like realized to some degree, like, no, no, some stretching feels amazing. And if that stretching, um, that feels amazing to you is the slow, um, easy, quiet, introspective kind, then like, Hey, maybe you should take that approach or try that approach in your inner stretching of the self too, because maybe that'll be what you like better too. Um, so the metaphor can just like go on and on for days. Um, but yeah, there are ways that it can feel good. It absolutely feels good to stretch and strengthen in that immediate physical, like I'm connected with my body, my muscles feel warm and I'm like feeling alive. And that happens in the inner you stretching and strengthening too. There's like this immediate thing of like, I'm, I'm doing things, I'm trying things, I'm getting connected with these muscles and these parts of myself, like willingness and playfulness and, you know, all these things, um, these inner muscles, you know, and it does feel good in the immediate. It absolutely can. But also there's like other ways that it feels good too, that are not just the immediate, like when you are stretching and strengthening your muscles and you know that, um, you're building them, you know, and you're increasing your range of motion and you're becoming more capable, you know, that it's making you function better everywhere. Um, and it's the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. That's like why I love the metaphor in the inner you too, in the inner stretching and strengthening, you are building 
building new parts of yourself, strengthening, getting more comfortable with you, knowing you better. Um, you know, you're definitely getting stronger and stretching that range of motion of you and your experience. Um, your inner experience. It's not just your experience of you, but your experience of everything has a broader range of motion because you're more flexible. Another metaphorical word, um, but you're more flexible in the inner realm, um, the non-physical realm. You can see things um, in different ways because you've shifted your perspective and tried different experiences and you can conceive of, you know, something that's happening in your inner world um, being you know, some other thing that isn't what it feels like. You can conceive that like, hey, yeah, you know, maybe when she said that, she actually meant it this way or something like that, you know, because those things get more flexible in there the more that you stretch them or something. I mean, that's just like a practical application for how it can happen, but it isn't exactly how we do our games. Our games are just us experimenting things um, with things and, you know, stretching us in the meantime. And so, yeah, like then you have this more full range of motion um, in the inner world, this more full range of possibilities um, and therefore a more full experience or range of you and of life in general um, because you're experiencing life um, in its full possibility range of motion, you know, because you're stretched out, you're warmed in there, you're more supple. Um, yeah, all of those things. And so you're functioning better. It's the same thing, just like having better range of motion increases your functioning in, you know, the physical realm, having more range of motion, more suppleness, all of that increases your function um, in all areas of life in the non-physical realm too. So, you know, I feel like we say it over and over, but like, what do I actually mean? Like, you will feel more alive. You will be functioning better everywhere. And you won't exactly know how, you know, because it's not a one for one. It's like, you know, it's because of this inner stretching that's happening when we're just playing these games and trying things. Um, so there's that. And then the capability, the capability. I mean, I'm saying you're going to function better because there's really more capability. You are, I mean, just like in your physical body, when you are building muscle, you're increasing what you're capable of. You're, you know, can lift more. Um, and when you're stretching, you're increasing what you're capable of. The, you know, ways that you can move, you are actually increasing what you're capable of. Um, and making more possibilities happen. That's how your capability is getting improved. Um, same thing, inner world, you know, I'm like saying these things in their most tiny detail because I feel like it has to be emphasized, like same thing in the inner world when you are strengthening and stretching all this inner stuff. Um, even if it's just like doing something goofy or feeling embarrassed and like stretching into that, like it's okay. Um, or, you know, um, asking yourself a question that you've never asked before and kind of learning a new thing or building a new aspect of you, um, you're stretching and strengthening. And so you are increasing capability. You're actually increasing your capability, your possibilities, um, you know, and of course your functioning improves. And, you know, then they say um, with physical, um, you know, increasing of your range of motion and capability and stretching and strengthening, it like reduces the risk of injury. It like make, it makes you more healthy, um, more capable, more in enjoyment of your own physical body because you can use it more. You know, you're in control of it. There's like better control, better connection, communication with your body, um, all those things. And yeah, you prevent injury um, and are more capable. And Woo, if it's not the same thing, like, uh, I sound like a dork, I'm sure, but like, I just get really fired up about this because it's the same thing. You prevent injury. Like, it's really the same, you know, metaphorical statement. You have more flexibility, more range of motion. You're preventing injuries for sure. Because, like, I used that example earlier, like, you might see 15 different ways you could take the sentence that just came out of that person's mouth. <laughs> um, or you take yourself a little less seriously. Um, or you're okay with being embarrassed or you're okay with being a little 
pissed if you need to because you're just like more flexible that way um, and stronger that way. Um, and so you are preventing a lot more little small injuries um, because it's okay. You have the... Um, the adaptability, which is also a word that's used a lot in the physical realm, like when you're doing physical stretching and strengthening, but you have that inwardly too, that adaptability that you can, you know, just roll with it, roll with it. And lots of possibilities can be, um, you know, on the table and you can flex and, um, you're just capable and, you know, kind of keep rolling with it. So there's that, the injury prevention for sure. And there's, um, oh man, I can't even remember what I was saying. I said them when I was talking about the physical realm. Um, now I can't remember how the, how they go back into the inner realm, eh, whatever. Um, you know, they all apply. And that's what I love so much about this. Cause it's just like, if we need to emphasize, why the inner world stuff is important. Um, okay. Okay. I'll use the outer world to emphasize it because we've already hit these topics usually in our culture and our daily life of like the benefits, you know, of having more capability, um, in the physical realm. Oh, it was health. You know, that was one of the things that I was talking about, just like balance and health and being more connected to your, to your body direct translation. Like I probably didn't even need to come back and revisit that because it just directly translates to that inner world too. It's like, yeah, it's more health, more aliveness. You feel like you're really living, which is another statement that I said all the time. Um, when I was doing all of the different courses and you know, it's like, do people get that? Cause I feel it. I really get it. Cause I've really been doing these exercises and I'm hoping that they are really feeling it too. And I think that if people are doing them, they are, but you know, if I'm explaining the how, because that's hard to do, um, it's this metaphor right here. How, um, well, how are people feeling more alive? Well, because they're feeling more in capability, more in control, more in connection, more in communication with the non-physical part of them too, with just them in general. Because why? Is anything special happening? No, actually just play is happening. They're just trying things, doing the stretching and the strengthening. You know, it's that and it's what's doing the work for them. Um, just like, you know, with the physical stuff. Are you doing any biology? thing, you know, is there surgery happening and someone working on those inner muscles? Like, no, I mean, you're just doing it through the natural function that is supposed to be happening through just stretching and strengthening, using your body, being active, trying things, experimenting. I mean, it's like long known that play, you know, is a form of learning. It is, you know, the very reason you see like animals and dogs and whatever, like play fighting. It's like how they are preparing themselves for a real fight. It's how they are learning how to do it. It's how they're preparing their bodies physically. It's how they're gaining control and mastery over their bodies and like establishing that kind of control and communication of like, okay, I want this muscle to do this. I've got to try it a few times. I got to play it. And maybe they're not even doing it intentionally. They're just playing. They're dogs. You know, they're not like thinking these things out. We're humans. We do think these things out, but it all happens like, you know, in that you know, a uh, subtle way. Uh, I don't know. It's like a byproduct kind of way, um, where you don't have to consciously be efforting. You just have to be active and playing and then it's happening as a byproduct and the same stuff applies. It's like play can really, um, like bring forth a lot of depth, a lot of like, I know myself and I'm learning and I'm now in greater control of like the inner world of things or just the non-physical world of things. I feel like I can communicate with that better. And I feel like I can control it with more dexterity and I can, you know, call upon it and say like, I want to choose to do this instead, you know, just the same way that we're like getting skillful with our physical bodies when we're stretching and strengthening, when we're stretching and strengthening in our inner world we're getting skills, we're gaining skills, getting more skillful and, um, you know, just making our life more healthy, making us feel like we're really doing it. We're really in full capability of our body. I mean, it makes you feel like, man, I'm really in my body. I'm in full capability of this, um, you know, human body that I've got here. Um, and it's the same with the inner world too, with the non-physical, you feel like oh, I'm really doing this life thing. I feel capable. I feel able. I feel like I'm really doing it. I feel like I've got skill. I've got mastery. Um, 
that's how you feel more alive and doing it. You feel like you've got better communication with your inner self and it didn't have to be a tedious thing. It was just play. It was just experiencing and trying things and experimenting. And it was that stuff that just brings the growth and the stretching and the strengthening um, as a byproduct, you know, subtly um, it does. So, um, man, you know, I just feel like there was no limit to all of the metaphor or the ways that the metaphor held true. And it's like, if it's needed, it's needed. I'll sit here and flesh it out for days. <laughs> um, because I really feel like it's important. I really feel like it did wonders for me and, um, does bring all these things and s people seem to get why stretching and strengthening in their body is really needed. But I don't know if they've totally gotten that um, stretching and strengthening in the inner world is really important too. And if they do get it, because I have seen people that are like into personal growth, and if they do get it though, sometimes they make it too technical and too challenging and that it has to be like deep philosophy and like, you know, um, that it can't just be play, and that it can't just be um, experiments and that it can't just be, you know, the very thing that we, I mean, because think about it. Okay. Cause this is like the last part of the metaphor that I'll, you know, drive it home. It's like, if you are really trying to stretch and strengthen your body, cause you know, it's a good thing and you're sold on the idea. Um, the thing that they say to do and that we all know to be true in our own experience is that you need to find something that you love, that feels fun, that feels like play in order to do it. Because the tedious stuff and doing it out of um, obligation or, you know, out of guilt that it like needs to happen or that you're, you know, fearfully worried that you're, you know, going to be getting more rigid physically and you're going to lose mobility and that you're going to be unhealthy and that you're going to die or that you're going to be in pain or that you're going to be miserable. You know, that it can be a motivator, um, but only a motivator to get there. It can't keep you there. You've got to find something that feels like play and that you can do it passively. You know, you're going to actively be doing the play, but the stretching and strengthening is going to be happening passively. I know this. <laughs> Why well, just hit me in the head? I know this because I've been teaching aerial dance for years and like people come there for that very reason. They want something to feel playful, like getting in a silk and flipping upside down. And it feels like they're on the playground again. And that's why it's like, whoa, this actually really made me feel like something was, you know, playful and it felt like art and it felt like I was expressing myself and it felt great. And that's why I kept at it. And then and it's making my body feel great. And there's so much stretching and strengthening that's happening. And it's so much better than doing reps or whatever. And we know that. We know that about the physical um, way to stretch and strengthen. But like, ooh, same applies like for this inner world stuff too. You know, yes, motivation might be because you're in pain or you're suffering or your inner world feels out of control or there's like relationship conflicts that are happening because relationship conflicts are a part of the non-physical world. I mean, yes, the person is in the physical world, but this relating and feelings and all this stuff that you're having are in the non-physical world. So like, yeah, you know, it might be pain and like fear of being unhealthy or, um, you know, some struggle that's actually happening that's maybe motivating you because often it is what motivates us to like turn inward and like do some of the inner work or, you know, even give a crap about the non-physical realm of life. Um, but it might be a good motivator, but it's not enough to really like make it fun and keep at it and like have it be a real part of your everyday life and your health, you know, the way that, you know, stretching and strengthening and like physically, you know, incorporating movement into your life in a way that like makes it a part of your everyday. Um, yeah, it's, you've got to find the thing that you love. You've got to find something that feels playful. You've got to find the stuff that, um, lets it happen passively so that it doesn't feel like reps, you know, and like drudgery and that it does feel like self-expression and it does remind you of being a kid again and being on the playground, but the inner world playground, so to speak. And that's why our games are like, you know, would you rather? And like these games that are very reminiscent of childhood um, that are just getting you playing and asking questions 
in, you know, that inner realm or the realm that is non-physical. The games that you would play as kids that weren't physical games, but just you know, non-physical inner world games like Would You Rather. I mean, that's the one that's coming to my mind, but we got tons and some of the physical stuff like wrestling, um, you know, and like pushing at each other in that playful way. Like these are the things um, that get the inner world asking questions and get that stuff moving and let the stretching and strengthening happen playfully. Um that still feel good, that still feel like play and that feel like, yeah, I can enjoy this. And that's what we're trying at. That's what we're trying at. That's what bring connection back is. It's like a wide variety of stuff to try to see which way of play you like to get you playing more, to get you more willing to play. Um, so that you can find the thing that you like, find the thing that you love that's going to keep you at the stretching and the strengthening. And, you know, it stretches and strengthens you too. So if you don't even know where to start, it's also just like a place to start. Like, what does it even feel like to stretch and strengthen my inner me? You know, um, what is that like? Do I like it? Are there varieties of it I like? You know, all of it. So, um, I, uh, that is my metaphor. I'll leave it there as promised. Um, there's probably a million other ways I can think of this metaphor playing out. And like, I hope you see a million other ways for it to play out too, because, um, that's it. That's my answer to the question. What is brain connection back? What are those games? What are you doing? Like, what is the thing? Why am I interested in this? Like, that's my answer. Stretching and strengthening of the inner you. And it's, an amazing thing, just like stretching and a strengthening and pff, stretching and strengthening the outer you.